Hi everybody and welcome to what I hope will be the first of many tutorials based around the Adonis JS framework. What we're going to do today is just build a very simple API. I'm not going to build any front end for it. We're going to use Postman to send and receive data to the API. And we're not going to work in any sort of authorization or authentication just yet either. So keep an eye out though for a future series where I will show you how to use Auth0 with Adonis. I have to admit it took me a while to kind of get my head around all that, but uh, it will be worth it because uh, Auth0 has some great offerings and I think uh, it's a great way to handle all sorts of authentication and authorization for an application. So today it's a simple API. Um, I think you're really going to like Adonis, so let's get started. Now I want to take you through some of the things that will help make your learning easier and more effective. What I have before me right here is the all-important cheat sheet. Now every time I tackle something new, I always have a cheat sheet with me. And I use this to keep track of my thoughts as I'm learning, any questions that come up, and any important things that I might have trouble learning, like a new syntax or something like that. So this cheat sheet is here for you. You can fork it, edit it, make it your own. As we work through the course, you can add to it as you want. I'll be updating it myself as well, so you can follow along with my updates or do completely what you want to do. Whatever helps you learn best, please add it to this and keep it as a reference. Every time I've tackled something new, I've been very happy to have this when I review the material because it helps quite a bit. Now to get us started, I've added some important links to the top of the cheat sheet. First on the list is Node.js. Of course, we are creating an API with Node, so we need Node on our local system running to, uh, to manage everything. Now, this link will just take you to the nodejs.org website. Uh, you can download the LTS version or the current version. Uh, either would be fine for our purposes today. And then packaged within that will also be NPM, which is the package manager for different Node uh, and JavaScript um, uh, libraries. So we'll need both. Uh, the next one will be the Adonis uh, JS documentation. Whenever you're learning something new, it's a really good idea to just have a, a skim through the documentation, get a little bit more familiar with what's there. So of course I have a link there, which will take you to the documentation here on the Adonis website. Next would be the Adonis JS CLI commands. Uh, Adonis does have a CLI tool which makes uh, working with Adonis uh, really, really easy. And you want to check out these CLI commands because we will use these often. Um, it doesn't take too long to get familiar with them, but nevertheless, it's good to have a link for that just in case uh, you forget at one time. They'll be right there. And that should be right here, I believe. Where do I have it? There we go. It's a GitHub repo and you just scroll down on the readme and you can see a lot of the different commands here. None of these uh, will make sense to you right now, but as we work, it'll start to become pretty easy to, to manage. The next uh, link is to the Connects ORM. Now Connects is an object relational mapping tool for working with SQL based database management systems for Node. It's a bit of a mouthful, but the Connects website you can find right here. It's um, if you're not familiar with working with uh, SQL directly, then a tool like Connects is kind of a nice way to get a little more familiar with what it's like to interact with a database. So Connects comes bundled with, um, with Adonis, and it allows us to write to the database and read from the database and do all uh, some other stuff that's really um, helpful. So uh, whenever you see there's some other ORMs out there like SQLize and whatnot, uh, a lot of these actually build on top of Connects. And um, so it's definitely a widely used ORM, and I'm pretty happy that Adonis has that bundled in with it. So that would be that. We will refer to this documentation several times as we're doing things uh, throughout our app lifecycle. So it's a good thing to have that bookmarked. Uh, next, API Primer. This is just a link to a PDF that I put together. Uh, you can find this that video um, going over what an API is uh, right here in this playlist. And that's really meant for people who have never built an API before. Um, I know when I first got started, what an API was and how it fit into the entire uh, application picture uh, was a bit of a mystery to me. So this is just kind of a summary of what I wish I knew when I was getting started. And it'll help you build that mental picture of um, what an API is and how it fits uh, with everything else. So definitely check that out. MySQL, MySQL Workbench. Uh, depending on what OS you're using, you may have a tool like XAMPP or WAMP or MAMP or probably a few others that I don't know about. 
uh, I prefer just to use MySQL uh, server directly. So these are links to the download page on the MySQL website. And Workbench is just a GUI for helping you uh, work on that database. So in this course, I'm going to have, uh, there is another video that you can go through to uh, see how to set up a database, how to install the server, first of all, set up a database and add a user to it, etc. Just some basics to help us get to a point where we can work on the API. So you can check out those links right there. Git. I won't be using Git throughout this uh, course, but if you are somewhat familiar with Git and need a little more practice, then it's a good idea to have that installed on your system and to uh, practice with it as you go through this course. So uh, I think you could do is every time we run through a new step in the course, you can just uh, commit that uh, with a new message uh, to your Git repo and that'll just keep track of everything. And that'll make it easy to backtrack if you make any mistakes. Postman. Because we're building an API, you need some sort of front end to make requests to that API to test out the endpoints and make sure it's working properly. We will not be building a front end in Vue or React or anything like that in this course. So Postman is a really quick and easy way uh, to test the endpoints and make sure that we're sending and receiving the data that we want. So this is a link to the Postman website. You can download it right here at getpostman.com. It's a fairly easy tool to use. I won't go over that just yet, but go ahead and install it. And later on in the course when we need it, I'll show you how to get it set up and how to use it. Now, before we get started, I have some final suggestions for you. One, please try to avoid the temptation to deep dive into anything just yet. Instead, just go through the course and focus on the concepts. Focus on the big picture. Build that big mental model of what goes into developing an API first. Once you get comfortable with that, there'll be plenty of time to get into the details. But for now, forming those concepts in your mind are very important. Two, as we're working, I will ask you to pause the video from time to time consult the documentation on your own and see if you could figure some things out without my help. There's not a lot of value in just following along with me and copying what I'm doing. The value comes in where you stop at key moments and explore a little bit on your own. And as you do that, you're going to form different questions in your own mind. Keep track of those in your cheat sheet. And that'll help you when you're learning. Everything will commit to memory that much easier. Three. Once you've gone through this course from start to finish, it's a good idea that you do it a few more times, but without the videos to help you. Instead, just consult your cheat sheet and see if you can make you know one or two or three or four new APIs without my help at all. This will highlight any gaps in your cheat sheet, and it'll also force you to recall things, of course. So instead of me holding your hand the whole way, you're actually forcing your mind to remember what you've learned and to internalize it a little bit more. When you do this over the next few weeks, try to space out your attempts. So maybe you'll do API 2 on day one, and then the next day you'll do it again, but maybe a few days later you'll try it again. The idea is that you're going to force your brain to remember these things at increasingly greater intervals. You're forcing your brain to remember these things just as you're about to forget them, and this will help you commit them to memory that much better. Finally, once you're able to create these APIs without too much trouble, and just using your cheat sheet, then it's a good idea to see if you can expand these and make them a little more complicated. So visit the documentation, see what else you can do. Throughout the course, I will pause at certain times and I will give you suggestions for how you can make things more complicated on your next attempts. So keep note of these in the cheat sheets and make use of them because it'll help you gradually expand how much you understand and it'll help you in your deeper dives in certain aspects of creating an API. And that's it. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below the video. I will answer them as promptly as I can. Uh, you can also reach out to me over at the website or via Twitter. And uh, finally, please do give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and just leave a comment if this helped you at all, uh, because that certainly encourages me and it helps me reach more people with the videos that I'm making.